Spark has put the ice on the cake with a triple. Sure. Mabry, the dagger. Boom! Nicholson, the goal ahead market. Townsville complete the comeback of the season. After an overtime thriller several weeks ago, these sides meet again in very different positions at this point in the season. The reigning champions have emerged from the gates sluggishly and desperately need to see themselves back on the winner's list, while the visiting team have burst forward in a flurry of big results despite the roadblocks that presented early in the season. Tonight, in the WNBL, it's the Southside Flyers and the Perth Lynx. Hello and welcome to Dandenong Stadium for this round nine clash between the second on the ladder Lynx against the champions in the Flyers. Jordan Canellas with you in commentary tonight for this encounter. Looking forward to it greatly. Alongside me is a woman who played over 170 games in the league over 11 seasons and went to the Olympics as well. Jenny Screen, good evening. Good evening. How are we going? I'm excited for this one. I'm sweating in the studio. <laughs> so I have no doubt these women are going to be sweltering tonight in uh, the, the heat box that is Dandenong Stadium. Yes, Melbourne's been uh, going through a heat wave in the last week or so. So the Dandenong Stadium tonight, I'm sure it's going to be uh, with all the bodies packed in there and everyone building up to fever pitch for this match. It is going to be very hot in there. The second side, the second time these two sides have met this season. And uh, as we have a look at the ladder as it stands heading into round number nine, this is how they shape up. Adelaide's on top, sitting comfortably at the top there. The Perth Lynx are right there in second position. Jenny, they are shaping as one of the early contenders this season. They are. They've had the luxury of being able to sit back and watch the other teams go about their business and being able to scout really well because they didn't play until the um, you know round five of this season. So I can't read too much into this at the moment because we've had so much stuff start. So many games have been cancelled, postponed, rescheduled. So you know, the, uh, whilst our side are sitting at six at the moment, I don't think that's where they're going to end up um, once they kind of get some continuity to their season. Perth, however, on the other hand, they've put everyone on notice with the way they're playing, both offensively and defensively with their display on, against Sydney on Sunday. Yeah, they were excellent against the uh, the Sydney Uni Flames. 86-81 was their final result, but off the back of a dominant last quarter, 25-11, to 11, they showed us what they're made of on that uh, on that night. Yeah, they did indeed. It was nice to see them slow them down. Mabry was her phenomenal self. She's going to be a contender, I would say, for obviously MVP. She does have game hashtag. Um, but when we look at the lineup for the Southside Flyers tonight, interestingly, they regain Australian Opals captain Jenna Hay, but unfortunately, they're now missing Bet Cole. She's adding 18 points, four rebounds, and shooting at a massive clip, 45% from the field. Field. So that is going to be a huge loss for them tonight. And again, Southside just can't get their whole team together, which is just frustrating for them. But no doubt they'll find a way through Rochi, through Christy Wallace, um, to uh, fill that void. Yeah, having a look at the starting fives there. So no Bet Cole, you saw her with the face mask on. Still there to be the, the G up, the hype woman for this team. <laughs> it has been frustrating, though, for Cheryl Chambers. I can only imagine just not having the, the, the starting five you want on the court. Sarah Blitzars has been in and out of the team only three games this season. And so it just, it's been the case of almost the best team, but not quite yet have they been able to put it all together on the park just because of roadblocks and injuries and COVID and all the rest. And, and that's welcome to sport. And then on the flip side, you have a team like um, the Perth Lynx who can put up a team like Sammy Wick and Lauren Scherf who's having a stellar season. I'm really intrigued to see her match up tonight against Abby Bishop. She got the upper hand in their, in their round or well, their game that they played a couple of weeks ago. And Darcy Gavin was also having a great season. Then out in the pack and the punch of that dynamic duo in the backcourt of Young and Mabry. And it's like, damn, how do you stop this team? This, this Perth team that Ryan Petrie has put together the head coach you just saw a moment ago. They, no wonder why they were one of the preseason favourites when you've brought in Jackie Young and, uh, and, and Marina Mabry, who have been so good. Uh, and then with Darcy Garvin already there, Sammy Wickham coming back, it's it's a new look team to last year. It's completely different. It's it's beautiful, and they play a nice brand of basketball. I don't think they've found their their gel either, similar to Southside Flyers. But equally, I don't think they've hit their straps. Sammy Whitcomb isn't playing Sammy Whitcomb style that we know. She normally, in the WNBL in past seasons, is the leading scorer, averaging 20-plus points a game. She's only around that 10 points per game. So I'm waiting for her to have that, you know, um, stellar performance. She was pretty good against Southside in their first matchup. She had 17 points and seven rebounds. So watch out for her as well. But 
Either way, I'm intrigued to see how a lot of these girls that are in the Opal squad are going to go. A lot of them will be matching up on each other and putting their hand up to her, who, who, no doubt Sandy Brondello, who may be in the crowd. She most definitely will be watching somewhere to see how all these girls go. So the starting five there for the Southside Flyers. Jenna O'Hay comes back into the team. Christy Wallace, Matty Rogge, Abby Bishop, Sarah Blitzarves. And for the Perth Lynx, as we mentioned there, such a strong team. Lawrence Scherf as well. Adding some size down low for the Perth Lynx. Jackie Young and Marina Mabry have been huge inclusions for the Perth Lynx this season. So we get underway after an overtime thriller a couple of weeks ago. And we have the same level of entertainment, please. I'm sure we will between these two sides. Perth Lynx get us underway. And a long shot early on missed out by Perth. So here comes Southside on the move. Wallace. Rochi waiting for the options to open up for the Flyers. Down low, here comes Bishop. No points just yet. Good O board, Rochi working away to the inside, kicking it out to the corner. Shot put up. And Perth will get the takeaway. Here comes Mabry. Backing away back out, Scherf. Garbin's waiting on the outside. Wickham. Garbin back in boards. And off the glass again. Rochi. Long attempt here from Bishop, and first points of the game go the way of the Southside Flyers. It only took us 90 seconds to get that score. Both teams had some great looks in those uh, couple of opening possessions, but Abby Bishop doing what she has done her whole career and that the ability to not only score inside the paint, but also from the three-point line. Long shot from the Perth Lynx. Wickham was lurking underneath. Rochi with the takeaway. Why not? Bishop. Or not. Long shot. <laughs> Well, when you, you feel like you've got the hot hand, it's nice to see you have a little laugh there. But if you've got the hot hand, you're feeling good on that first one, like we see here in the replay. Just stepping out, sagging defense allowed her to knock down that shot. Scherf just found herself caught out too deep into the keyway. But take a second one. It doesn't pay off, but no doubt Abby will go back to the, to the, the game again and, and knock down another three. Young with the mid-range shot gets the first points on the board for the Perth Lynx. So on the board after two minutes in the opening quarter. Wallace around to Blitzarves. Oh, hey, Rochi has it stolen away from her. Wickham, she consolidates the steal. Mabry's there in support underneath the buckets. Second go, and it's in for Perth. Good break there from Sammy Wickham, anticipating the pass well. And that's what Sammy Whitcomb gives you. I mean, she's got the scoring power, but her ability to be a great leader um, and also get those one percenters possessions, whether it be rebounds, steals, push out and run, allows Perth to be very uh, volatile in many positions. Whitcomb with the charge in down the lane. How's that? Sammy Whitcomb extending Perth's early leads. Rochi O'Hay. Blitzarts. Bishop off to Wallace. Here goes Wallace. Oh, that's some aggressive stuff from Kirsty Wallace. In off the glass. Yeah, nice job there by Christy. Nice little hesitation. Got it on her left hand. Then crossed it back over to her right for a really tough but beautiful finish. Young with the long range two rattles in and out. So the Flyers will transition. Rochi looking it around Wickham. Bishop with the one-two from Blitzarves. Bishop from outside, snuffs down. And that's the mentality of a shooter, right? You hit one, you airball the next, and then you'll just go back and, and drill another one. She's two of three from deep is Bishop. But that's what Sydney did really well on Sunday against the Perth Lynx, is they exploited the pick and pop. And no doubt Southside Flyers have got that on the scout to go to that to obviously get some scores on the board. Garvin got sandwiched out at one end. So hey at the other end, off the glass. Blitzarves was in there, out of play. We'll see here some great ball movement. Nice penetration there from Blitzarves to find her, her sister in Bishop and hit that nice long three. Oh, hey. Rochi from a standing start. 
A long range effort from Matty Rocci. An early look at three. No good. Here goes Jackie Young down the other end. Puts the move on Blitzarves. Gets into the low post. Christy Wallace with the takeaway. Unorthodox pass out to the corner, but the reverse layup from Sarah Blitzarves. Blitzarves in their last game in overtime. She was phenomenal. She had 21 points, uh, along with a couple of rebounds as we see Sammy Wickham penetrating nice and hard there. From the corner, Wickham. Good second chance. Lauren Scherf had it stolen away from her, but bounced back to Wickham in the corner. Oh, what a great high low pass from O'Hay down low to Bishop. It's excellent start from the veterans of this Southside team. Well, and you can see the matchup uh, down one end. You've got Jenna O'Hay or Bishop marking either Darcy or Scherf. So if that is um, different and you've got Bishop marking Garbin, then on the offensive end, it makes it very hard for Scherf to find Bishop and she can get out in transition, as we know. And then we just see Lauren having a little bit of sleep there on the cut. And another one that you don't want to get caught sleeping against is Sammy Wickham um, with her ability and athleticism to either get to the rim or find a, a nice deep three. Some points here for Wickham on offer. Both missed from Wickham. Still a three-point advantage here early days for the Flyers. Rochi, Bishop looking for the pass back as Rochi was making the move around, but Perth congested that central lane, blocked off the passing lane. And Wickham couldn't quite link up. It's Eisenbarger on the court for the first time tonight. Here come the Flyers. It's Harmon into the corner now for Bishop for a look. Harmon battles away underneath the hoop. Again, the Perth Lynx get the takeaway. Some very combative down low in this opening quarter. Garbin shares it off. Long range look from the Lynx. Maybe gets the O board. Jerry was just caught behind there as Maybe goes in for more and she gets it for the Perth Lynx. Marina Mabry getting the Lynx the lead back as we've seesawed between these two sides in the opening stanza. Harmon, Rochi again, off the left hand, pulls up the stripe and makes it go down. That was smooth there from Matty Rochi, a nice little inside out on the left hand and a pull up mid range jumper, which is nice to see her adding it to her game. One look from Chabatoni, floats it up and in for three. Alex is one kid that I've really enjoyed. She's an Adelaide junior. She's had some really good punch and minutes for Perth off the bench, and, and you're going to need that. You know, they've got the Stars, but Stars can always get into trouble. We know Mabry, she can get quite heated and into foul trouble, so it's nice to see someone like Alex, who's got the highest arc on a shot. I think it's higher than Christy Harrow ever shot the ball. Um, but nice to see her contributing again. Harbour, good work on the baseline, retrieving that. And then making a count underneath. And that's actually uh, Emily Harmon's first buckets in the WNBL and as a WNBL player. So nice for her to see her getting some minutes. She only averages about five a game and, and some points as well. Yeah, she's played three games so far, but all of them just uh, brief minutes. As you say, Jenny. So a three-point advantage. Here to the Perth Lynx. Nice to see there with that pick and roll action that Darcy probably not doing what she loves to do. She's not a she's not a screen and roller. She's more a pick and pipe type of player. But saw the um, the mismatch and the ability to exploit the Southside flies there. And that's one area Southside really have to clean up is their pick and roll action. I think across the board in the round the nine rounds we've had and the games that they've played. It's where they've been exploited mostly from all teams. Rochi being marked closely by Alex Sharp. And whistle sounds. There's Emily Harmon again. A look at her first points from a moment ago. 31 years old, Emily Harmon. 
He's played college basketball, has been around the traps in the NBL 1. And before that, the Siebel, the old name. Mabry for Perth. Circles in and around and back out again. Rochi quickly down the other end, shrugging off Chapitoni as she goes. Into the corner for Gaze, an early look, bounces up and in. Yeah, you never want to close out long to uh, a Gaze surname, um, considering she is related to the family. And Kate Gaze, she's known for being a shooter. Nice little up fake, long close out, and a pull up Jake and Kate. Sharp underneath, first and second attempts. Second one was good from Alex Sharp. Had her debut in the WNBL last year and had a really good breakout debut season. Rochi off the back of the rim. Chabatoni winning it back. Sideline pass. Mabry was seen out by Gaze. Good defensive work to neutralise the contest. You spoke about briefly there, Alex Sharp, who's, um, you know, plays off the bench for the Perth Lynx. She's had some great NBL one season. She was the M MVP over in the Western Australian League uh, this season, just gone, and, and, and still finding her straps as well. I don't think she's hit her mark. She's still trying to find out where she fits in this team. We know she has the ability to shoot from three, um, and she was also a member of the World Uni Games team in 2017. So she's she's been around. And I think the next couple of years, you're going to see uh, Alex Sharp take her game to the next level. Back in her home city as well, Alex Sharp from Melbourne. We have a handful of Melburnians. Uh, uh, Lauren Scherf also from Melbourne in this Perth team. There goes Jenna O'Hay. So it's been a tight arm wrestle in this first quarter. Nothing to split these two sides, really. Difference of just two on the scoreboard with a minute to go. Here's Young for the look on the outside. Rebound from Sharp. Has it stolen away from her by O'Hay. The Flyers, can they make this rebound count? O'Hay just lost it in the battle with Chabatoni in transition. You've got to wonder for the Southside Flyers as we see them here trying to find the way around. Nice little smart back, back door play from the veteran in Jenna O'Hay and Maddie Rochi finding her for the easy two. But Considering how many COVID infections they've had and, and issues and isolations, you've got to have a question mark over how much effect and the fatigue of COVID and, and how long it's going to take these girls to get back to being 100%. I don't think Jenna's 100%, um, and I don't think a lot of them, Emily Harmon, she also had it as well. So it'll be interesting to see if that plays into their game as we get further into, you know, closer to the end of the, the fourth quarter. 30 seconds to go in this opening quarter. O'Hay oh, kicked it around to Gaze. Here's Rochi. Rochi goes out to her left. Pass down low to Harmon, who's met by two. And does well to get the whistle. Rochi's playing with some really good um, composure at the moment um, on the offensive end, as we see here. Jackie Young hitting a three. But coming off pick and rolls, you know, she's averaging four and a bit turnovers per game, which isn't great. She's first in the league. It's not something you want to as a point guard. But... Tonight, I'm really enjoying Maddie Rochi's composure, um, her ability to keep a dribble alive off the pick and roll, and her ability to find other teammates, and then equally be able to find that mid-range game, which is nice to see her, because in the last couple of years, it's just been either the three or all the way to the rack. Extra point there from Emily Harmon. Shot clock is off, final possession. Here's Mabry for Perth. Rochi guarding her close to try and close out the first quarter from a Flyers perspective. Maybe gets loose for a second. One back by Scherf. And as the buzzer goes to end the first quarter, points missed out at the very end. It has been a close run thing in the first quarter. Just three points in it. The Perth Lynx leads 24-21 to the Flyers. Sammy Whitcomb and Abby Bishop lead the way with eight points apiece. We'll come back on the other side of this for the second quarter from Danny Nong Stadium. strong enough, not fast enough, wrong. We're crossover queens, scoring buckets, taking names and hitting no look three. We fight for every ball. Until we dunk, hell yeah. 
When we roll into the court with nothing to lose and everything to prove, you're in for a show. She got stars, she got balls, she got police, she got game. Welcome back to Dandenong Stadium. So it's quarter time. The Flyers 21, the Lynx 24 after the first 10 minutes. If you want to get your kids involved in basketball, Aussie Hoops is the way to go. It's Australia's leading national junior program, introducing kids from the age of 5 to 10 to uh, involved in the sport early on in their basketballing careers, hopefully. They learn and improve their fundamental movement skills as well as the basics of teamwork and cooperation which will help them both on and off the court. And it makes them new friends, gets them having a lot of fun. Aussie Hoops has uh, worked for hundreds of thousands of kids around Australia, more than 100,000 kids around Australia. If you want to get your kid involved, visit the Aussie Hoops locator, which can be found at aussiehoops.basketball forward slash find a program. That's find dash a dash program, Aussie Hoops dot basketball. Registrations for term one programs are now open. So 21 points apiece, readjustment of the scoreboard at the break. As we get things underway with the Southside Flyers, Sarah Blitzarves driving inside first. Comes back out to O'Hay, goes back down low to Blitzarves. Nice recognition there from Southside Flyers of the shot clock. It was falling down. I'd love to see in this second quarter. I don't know if the heat is, is hurting these girls. I know it's hot um, and it's pretty humid in Dandenong Stadium, but everyone's just a little bit too nice for me right now. Everyone's being able to cut. Everyone's being able to make the shots that they want to make in, in the positions that they want to take it from. And, and no one's really stamping their authority saying, you're not going to do this. And so it'll be interesting to see which team is going to step up and create that in this next quarter. Good steal from Young as they transition again here at Perth. Scherf off the glass. That's her first points for the game. Scoreless in that first quarter. Just a bit of Ray. You know, she did have the upper end. We spoke about that. She had 23 points and 10 rebounds in their last matchup and obviously got the upper hand of Abby Bishop. But if we're talking about upper hands right now, Abby Bishop leading all scorers with eight points. Three steals to two in favour of the Perth Lynx. Perth have managed to capitalise on most of theirs. More points for the Flyers. Mabry calling for the movement from Scherf. A bullet pass out to Young. Comes inside for the mid-range two, Jackie Young. Love the selfless pass there from Lauren Scherf. Nice dive. They had to rotate defensively. But I'd love to see Lauren just pound it in and go up hard. She's the biggest girl on the court in terms of size and height. And uh, that would have been an easy two for her. Blitzar was looking for options. She had her eyes averting around the lane. Maybe fooling some Perth players and then went herself, Sarah Blitzars. Abby Bishop leads the way with 10 points on the floor across the tallies of both teams. Garvin, the pass back out. Scherf. Here's Whitcomb. Garvin from a standing start looking for three points. Went close. The Flyers will bring it back down through Christy Wallace. Bishop to Blitzarves. Being guarded closely, given the time. Wallace, there's a whistle. Might have been for three in the key, it looked like. Look at that pass again from Lawrence Scherf. Didn't even think about shooting, just saw the open player. Here's Mabry pulling up at the three-point line. What a lovely shot from Marina Mabry. And that's just a, a lack of communication, a, a breakdown defensively from the Southside players. Someone that's shooting at the clip that she does and has been um, for this season, you cannot give her an inch. You give her that, she'll take a mile. High low passing from the Flyers. Back out top to Wallace. Now inside to Bishop on the fadeaway. One teasing bounce off the front of the rim and out. 
Again, Abby just finding front position there against Scherf as we see the battle between Mabry and Blitzarves and the correct call by the co by the referees, rather. Field goal percentage is about even at the moment. 10 from 17 for the Flyers at 59%. 9 from 16 for Perth at 56%. Just a four-point game as Young goes in looking for more and gets more. Jackie Young up to eight points. Wallace inside, Blitzarves trying to manoeuvre, wick him around, and that's really smart basketball from Sarah Blitzarves. Yeah, great job by there by Sarah to run the lane as we see Perth go to work here. Too easy on the offensive end in that pick and roll setting, but equally down the other end, just in the push of transition basketball, a basket that shouldn't happen. Blitzarves finding it easy underneath the basket for a three point play. And that's a mismatch that surely Ryan Patrick would. would look to rectify Sammy Whitcomb on Sarah Blitzarves. Whitcomb the, the shorter player. Perth still on top. More easy points again there for Perth. Yeah I think it's easy both ways. I think both teams are scoring at will. I think no one is really stepping up and, and providing energy defensively. The scout doesn't seem to be being followed if I'm being honest. Everyone is allowed to shoot the shots that they're good at. Blitzarves getting some great cuts. We know that's what she's good at. Bishop pick and pop. She loves the three ball. She's been getting that. And then Sammy Whitcomb's been getting her penetration and drives on the left hand side as well. So for me, I think both coaches are going to hopefully be talking defense and we might be able to hear Cheryl now. Oh, we won't. And I'll just pretend like I know what she's saying. So can I'm going to assume. You lip, can you lip read, <laughs> I'm going to assume it's defense. <laughs> Offensively, they're fine. They're at 30 points a game. Uh, we know that Perth average 87 points a game. They're well on target to get that. So right now, it's basically, for me, whoever's going to score the most, obviously we know is going to win. But I want to see a team lock down and, and provide some defensive prowess and, and make teams have to think a little bit more. And, and hopefully that was Cheryl's message to her team as they try and you know, stem this lead, that, which is six points from the Perth, Perth Lynx. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's been an ease of scoring. There hasn't been the, the high energy defense just yet from either team. The aggression we've seen the Flyers uh, in, in previous wins this season, which have been very few, mind you, two to two and four. When they have had those wins, it's come with good aggressive play. It's front foot basketball. So they restart. Here's Wallace, Rochi. Wallace, look from the corner from O'Hay, it's an easy rebound from Scherf, standing tall underneath the bucket, Young directing traffic, Mabry pulls up just inside, and Rochi rebounding, O'Hay, a look on the outside from Blitzarves, She's feeling it. She's doing a great job. She got 10 points, first player into double digits, apart from Young from Perth Lynx. She had two at quarter time. Nice little punch, eight point break from Blitzarves in the second quarter. Jackie Young floating inside the three point line. And again, Rochi gets a takeaway. So Perth just holding this slight advantage here at the start of the second quarter, or halfway through the second quarter now as it's flown by. This second term. And again, I feel like that's deja vu. We've seen this. We've seen Maddie Rochi penetrate, have some poise. And then we see, you know, Christy Wallace just catching Jackie Young there, falling asleep on the wing on the back door. Something that's so simple. We saw Jenna O'Hay do it in the first quarter, but Perth Links are better in that. Um, and I'm sure that their coach would be imploring them to be better than that. Saw Abby Bishop do it as well earlier against Lauren Scherf. They would have slide their way in underneath around the baseline side. Extra point added on. Nice minutes there from Wallace, and, and uh, we've seen Southside now go on a five-point run here, halfway through the second quarter. And the Lynx answer back. Chabatoni driving away past Rochi. Right-handed floater. And Sharp can't win it back. It's good work from O'Hay. 
transitioning quickly down the other end, off the glass, Genero. Hey, how's that from end to end basketball? How's that? If you're Southside Flares, you're happy. But if you're the Perth Lynx, you aren't happy. I don't know how Jenna can get the rebound and then penetrate full court and not have one person from the Perth Lynx in the black uniform step up to defend her or at least make it difficult for her. Not one. She passes. One, two, three. Darcy Garbin at the end didn't even contest it and gets a nice, easy finish and takes the lead. Split them right up the middle, Jenner O'Hay. Here she is again. Rochi made the run down the inside. Bishop gets it out top. Gaze. Now Rochi re-emerges. Here goes Rochi, beating Sharp. Oh, what a shot from Matty Rochi. Brilliant stuff. And now the Flyers able to extend their leads. Garbin answers right back. Darcy Garbin, there's the class from Darcy Garbin. She's up to five. Oh, hey, Rochi. Bishop waits there with the screen. Rochi kicks it back out to Bishop. Pumps the pass out to the left, goes the shot. And Sharp just keeps it inside. Mabry squeezed out two to one. What a pass into the corner. Garbin! Oh, that is lovely stuff from Marina Mabry to find that pass all the way across court to Darcy Garbin. Darcy's been shooting really well from the land of plenty. She's at 48% clip from the three-point line for this season, probably her best in her career as we see another back cut from the Perth Lynx, just trying to get in the lanes a little bit too much, which is allowing Southside Flyers to exploit that back cut, and that's now their eighth point off such an easy, easy option. Mabry steps outside, floats it right up, big rainbow shot. Rochi, one point lead here for the Flyers. Rochi on the inside, looking for more. Does Do the, Ryan Patrick just need to tweak the defensive formation a little bit, have one player playing further deep, because there's a lot of high plays at the moment allowing those runs around the inside. No, it's got nothing to do with <laughs> tweaking anything except for effort and a little bit of tenacity um, and uh, desire from these girls on the defensive end. Structurally, it's fine, but just have a little bit, bit of a pride in terms of the way you want to play and push them out to the three-point line rather than trying to get the denial all the time. Stolen away by Chabatoni off the pass of O'Hay. Mabry. Garbin waits with it. Now Whitcomb back on the floor. Garbin provides the opening. Trying to hustle her way to the inside. Sharp, quick hands out to Whitcomb. Flies it up. Pings all the way back out. Whitcomb again. Sharp presents short. Wickham still with it. Now Mabry inside two minutes for three points as the shot clock expires. It was a desperate shot in the end that Perth just had to get away. Rochi calls for some calm. Bishop out to O'Hay. O'Hay again looking for two. She fell around the back. And it certainly was. Mabry muttering to herself, not happy with the call. Nice little scoop pass there to find the in form Darcy Garbin. And we see that back cut action that I'm sure is going to get talked about by the Perth Lynx. But Mabry there with the foul. And uh, she can't argue with that one. Uh, that was as easy a foul as they come by. Points here for O'Hay. Flyers nudge their way further in front. Jenna O'Hay doing the job. She's got six points to her name now. Converting both from the free throw line. Jenna O'Hay. Here's Burrows on for the floor. First time seeing her tonight for the Perth Lynx. And does well to link up with Jackie Young. Aggressive move down low from Young. Rochi found the free player on the outside in Jarry. Rattles in and out. Smart passing and movement to find the open player, but 
execution was just a fraction off. Tough stuff on the inside from Harmon. Quick clean up of the floor. Jackie Young, after those last points, leads all scorers with 12. Abby Bishop and Sarah Blitzarves both on 10 for the Southside Flyers. Rochi with the inbound pass here at the Flyers. Scoring ends. Quick pass in. And back out again. It's Chelsea D'Angelo on the floor. Chelsea D'Angelo in her first season with the Southside Flyers after venturing from the Boomers last year, tore her Achilles and has made her return from that. And a big, big country junior has come through the pathway and, uh, you know, signed into NBL1 for this upcoming season. And, and let's hope she can get some, some great games under her belt in, in the coming years. Young into Whitcomb. Whitcomb with a bullet up the lane, but it was too quick for Scherf. Now D'Angelo. Gaze. She's got Jerry right beside her. Harmon. D'Angelo again. Weaving her way through the traffic. Jerry Gaze puts it up. What a shot from Kate Gaze. Huge bucket and huge from the Southside Flyers. All but Maddie Brocci uh, are from the bench. And nice to see them having some input. They're not causing any damage. They're able to hold the lead. And, and nice to see Kate Gaze uh, drain a long one from deep there. Oh, a shot from Kate Gaze. Arm like a piston right out there. Seventeen seconds on the clock. Two second differential between the shot clock. Probably last possession here for the Perth Lynx. So Mabry for the visiting team. Shovels off. D'Angelo gets in and the layup off the glass. Nice work from Marina Mabry. One last shot put up from half court. Matty Rocci falls short. But the Southside Flyers have a two-point lead, and like it was a couple of weeks ago, close game, close on the scoreboard between these two sides, the Southside Flyers and the Perth Lynx. Jordan Canellis and Jenny Screen with you, Jenny, as we uh, head in to the halftime break. It has been, it's been a, a it's been a free-flowing game, but to your point earlier, the, the scoring has come easy. Defence taking their time to build into it, but it's a close contest nonetheless. Yeah, everyone loves a close contest. Flyers are up by two. Perth Lynx have got to do some job on the defensive end and clean it up a little bit. 46 points or 44 is just too many for either team. They're both shooting at a beautiful 56 and 60%. I wouldn't expect that in this heat um, with the fatigue that they're probably feeling, but they're getting away with that because of the, let's shall we say, the ease in which the girls are playing defense. And, and when you do that, you get the likes of Abby Bishop being able to hit shots, Sammy Whip can be able to drive to the lane when she wants and find her teammates. Um, and then you get Southside Flyers who've just made a mockery on the defensive end of the Perth Lynx in terms of when they overplay, they get those nice little back cuts and, and, and making the Perth Lynx look a little bit silly. But uh, no doubt the defense will tighten up in the second half and we'll see a game that's going to potentially go down to the wire. So the leading point scorers on the floor, Jackie Young leads the way with 12 points for the Perth Lynx. The next best of the visiting team scorers. Uh, Marina Mabry has nine and eight points apiece for Garbin and Whitcomb. While for the Southside Flyers, ten each for Abby Bishop and Sarah Blitzarves. And the next best is uh, Maddie Rochi with seven. As for the rebounds, Maddie Rochi has five rebounds for the Southside Flyers, while Lauren Scherf has five for the Perth Lynx. Who's been the most impactful player, do you think, Jenny, from this first half? Uh, for me, I think, you know, uh, the Southside Flyers have had great contributions across the board. They've had eight points off the bench, um, and they've had good distribution. They're finding the open player. They're not just going to the likes of Bishop or going to the likes of Rochi. They've had, you know, Hay, Wallace, they've had some good points as well. I can't really name one player. For Perth, I think it's the same. Scherf's been really quiet for my liking. Um, she only has two points for the game, five rebounds, but I'd like to see her become more of a target in the second half.
No, not too many stats that separate either sides greatly. The assists was the only thing. 14 to 7 in favour of the Southside Flyers. So working it around a bit more. There's been some more fast break points from the Perth Lynx. So they've probably had more solo efforts. Well, their ability to move the ball has been better. They've got 14 assists to 7, as you said. They've been able to find their open teammates. Their cuts have been more explosive. And their cuts off cuts as well has, has helped them, as we've talked about. Rebound count's pretty even. Uh, the only real differential the, uh, is the assist, which we've discussed. But for me, it's the defense. Who any, whoever in this these two teams steps up um, their defensive intensity in the second half is the likely that's going to come away with win. Now we've got to see whether Southside Flyers can hold their nerve um, and see whether fatigue's going to be a factor in that COVID kind of shadow that's been hanging over their head for a while, whether that's going to come into play as well. So halftime here from Dandenong Stadium in round nine of this WNBL season. And it's the Southside Flyers, the home side, up by two points, 46-44 at the main break. We're thinking of grabbing a bite tonight. Any new places close by? Well, There's also... Oh. I think 20 is enough. Yeah, yeah, that should do us.
Welcome back to Dandenong Stadium. Second half about to get underway here in this round nine clash between the Southside Flyers and the Perth Lynx, 46-42. You can see the score at half time. Jackie Young with the leading points for the Perth Lynx, 12. Abby Bishop and Sarah Blitzarves with 10 points apiece. You can see Sandy Brondello there in the, in the light blue shirt, the Opals head coach. And the Opals are getting ready for their upcoming World Cup qualifying campaign. The hosts already, but they go through the qualifying rigmarole nonetheless. Don't forget, in September, that is when the FIBA Women's World Basketball Cup is returning to Australian shores for the first time in 27 years, featuring 12 teams, 144 of the world's best players and 38 games across 10 days. The FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup will deliver plenty of action for Aussie basketball fans. Sign up for first access to tickets at Women's World Cup. Dot basketball. That's where you go online to grab your tickets. Uh, Jordan Canellis and Jenny Screen with you here in this uh, round nine clash. And Sandy's got a lot to ponder because she's got six players on the floor tonight here, Jenny, who are part of the Opals training camp squad, which go to Sydney in about uh, about a week from now. Next week it'll be Sarah Blitzarves, Abby Bishop, Rebecca Cole, and uh, Maddie Rochi. Bet Cole's not playing tonight, but she's out there still on the sideline supporting the Flyers. And Darcy Garvin and Sammy, Sammy Whitcomb as well for the Perth Lynx. So some high-quality talent on show here for, uh, for Brondello to, to ponder over. Yes, and the lady sitting next to her on the left, Rachel Spawn, is a three-time Olympian herself, a former teammate of Sandy Brondello's. No doubt will be able to have some chin wags of who they think is good, but I think there's going to have to be a changing of the guard at the Opals. I don't think many positions are solidified for Sandy, and uh, it'll be a great test for the girls to head over and, and play some good quality competition um, in the in the lead-up to the World Cup. And a lot of these girls right now have the opportunity to put their hand up and say, pick me. And it'll be a, a much different squad to what we saw at the Olympics? Uh, look, I think it needs to be. I mean, I, that's just my personal opinion. I, um, I, I, it'll be interesting to see how the likes of Rochi goes. Shyla Heal, we haven't seen her in the green and gold at a senior level yet. Um, and, and what that's going to look like um, for the makeup of Sandy. But, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. And then you've got the bigs. Remember, Marian Mariana Tolo isn't here. Uh, she's over playing in France as well. So we don't know where she's going to be at. Um, but it's, it's, there's a lot of positions. Abby Bishop gets a call up. Let's see what she can do. We know she's already an Olympian from 2012 in London, and she's been having a great season, almost averaging a double-double. So for me, yes, I think it needs to be a changing of the guard. Um, and I really, really enjoyed um, seeing the Asia Cup uh, recently with some of the nice, younger, um, energetic talent that we have in this country. So the training camp is uh, from the 31st of January for about a week, and then the World Cup qualifying tournament in Serbia from Feb 10 to 13, which is right sort of in the middle of the WNBL season, having those players away for that time and having it sort of cut right in, in half the WNBL season. Is that going to be a massive disruption? No, I think this whole season has been uh, the definition of what uh, disruption is. That's true. As, um, so, you know, all players have been great in the last couple of seasons of being able to adapt and improvise with COVID and, and the like. So I don't think it's any new, new for them, um, but it will be exciting to see uh, what these girls can do and, and get them back together. It's not long, you know, after February and then the season finishes end of March, April. Um, and then you hear the whispers of Lauren Jackson potentially um, making a return if she's fit and healthy. I saw a picture of her on um, uh, the socials recently in Albury and uh, she looks good and she looks fit. And, and I don't know if they're rumours or just innuendo and people just spitballing, but... Uh, that would be an interesting tactic as well. Goodness, imagine Laurie Jackson back in the league. Yeah. Oh. Which is great I'm for sure Loz. she could still do it too. Which is great for Loz, right? But then that concerns me as we see Jackie Young hit down um, the second bucket for the Perth Lynx of the third quarter to take the lead out to four. Um, but then that concerns me. It's great that Lauren may potentially be coming back and that might be a headline. But then that worries me that we need Lauren, um, yeah. who's, who's 40 now. Um, that concerns me from a Basketball Australia point of view. It's like, well, what are we doing? Where is the rest of our talent? And so on and so forth. But I think we've got some here in the like of that player there, Christy Wallace, as she takes a, a little stumble after a great little finish and a reverse layup on the left-hand side. Well, if it amounts to nothing for Lauren Jackson, at least she's got the compliment that people still rate her enough to be able to play at this age. It's, uh, I think, anyone that age you're being called fit and healthy no i reckon she can still play basketball and take that absolutely <laughs> genero hey underneath 
It's been a, another even start. Perth have nudged their way in front from the half-time score. They might blow it out a little further here, but Mabry's just offline. Bishop hands it off to Rochi. Mabry was right behind her. That was just absent-mindedness from Rochi. Mabry down the other end, makes it count. That was a cheeky play, and she <laughs> jogs back with a cheeky smile. Marina Mabry. Bishop. Rochi driving inside. Bishop from outside. Long look. Blitzavs off the glass. Good stuff from Sarah Blitzavs. Nice offensive rebounding from the Southside Flyers. That's their ninth for the game. And as we see, Maddie Rossi trying to be a little bit cheeky and uh, gets caught with a Wickham left hand drive. But nice job from Blitzavs in terms of. Uh, Southside Flyers, they're taking a lot of shots. Five this quarter have been from the three-point line in the first six, four minutes of this game. So, luckily enough, they're getting girls crashing the boards to give them the second options. Wallace flips it over the top. Bishop scrambling hard on the inside. It's good stuff from Abby Bishop as well. Mabry brings it down the other end. Garbin. Whitcomb presents. Good move around Rochi. Just couldn't finish off the move, Sammy Whitcomb. Here's Rochi. Long range. Just mistimes that little finger ricochet on the way through as well. Young. Did well to regather that. That was going behind her legs. And in the end, it turns out to be a great move from Jackie Young. A handoff to Scherf. A three point shot. So timeout called. A couple of changes will be rung here. Guy Prechik bringing his charges in. Jackie Young has had 16 points tonight. Eight from 11 from the floor. No three-pointers in a game just yet. Two rebounds, two assists. And here's some of the best of... Jackie Young and what she's been able to bring to this Perth team tonight. And that's what the, the, the good thing about the Perth Lynx team is that, you know, Mabry might be down on points or or um, Semi Wickham, who isn't. They've both got in, they're both in double digits. But Jackie Young was quiet at the start of the season. That took a little bit, a couple of games to find her feet. But uh, now is just trying to find that rhythm. She, we know she has great ability to get to the rack and, and downhill and penetrate. And off the pick and roll, she's also great at finding that mid-range game. I don't think the three ball is, is her go-to, uh, but most definitely that mid-range pull-up J is, is something to like from Jackie Young. College basketball champion back in 2018 with Notre Dame. Picks first in the 2019 WNBA draft for the Las Vegas Aces and was in the all-rookie team in 2019 in the WNBA. Jackie Young, one of the... Young stars of basketball in the States, 24 years old, and this is her first ever appearance in the, uh, well, not tonight specifically, but this season, her first ever appearance in the WNBL. Restart of play halfway through this third quarter. Gaze sharing it with Wallace. Here's Bishop. Working down low in the posts. Got a shot off in the end, but she was being jammed up by three. Ball spins out of play. Inbound to come in here. It was off sharp last. Bishop with the cross-court pass from the corner. The look from the Flyers. Five-point lead for the visiting sides, who sits second on the WNBL ladder in this ninth round. Four and two, their win-loss record. Young hustling her way to the inside. Tough here as we see a bit of contact. Yeah. Probably unfortunate there for Sarah Blitzer. It was a late call. Bit of composure here as we see Jackie Young getting the ball onto her left-hand side, finishing on her right. A delayed call, and you see the reaction from the south side flies there in terms of what the decision was from the referees.
free throws here for Jackie Young. Her first visit to the charity stripe tonight. One from two she goes. Defending Wallace. Gaze. Bishop. Now Jerry. Oh, hey, flings it cross court. Bishop. Wallace with a long look from the outside. And a much needed bucket there from the Southside Flyers. Good execution on that transition off the foul shot from the Perth Lynx. Got good ball movement, had some nice screening action. Wallace hitting the up screen for Bishop and then finding itself open there for a nice long two. Young wanted the immediate response. Offensive rebound from Garbin. Eisenberg is there providing some protection for Young. Now Eisenberg presenting. Garbin from the outside. Eisenberg is working hard with the passes. Just wayward. Just unfortunate there. Can't, can't uh, forgive her for the effort there as we see Christy Wallace knocking down a long, actually three, not two, should I say. But Eisenberger getting on the offensive glass. Just not able to find Wickham, but you've got to love the effort of that play. So still a slim lead here for Perth. Here's Gaze manoeuvring her way to the outside. Scherf with the last minute attempt to block and she gets the rebound, Scherf. Transitioning quickly, almost lost it for a second. Mabry. Tempo taken out of this Perth attack for a second. Mabry being guarded close by Wallace. Now Scherf being harassed around the back by Jarry. And that harassing paid off from Jarry. Good defensive work. The Flyers transitioning down the other end. Wallace flings it up. That was good stuff from Christy Wallace from one end to the other. The Southside Flyers, good teamwork. Brings them back into one point. And that, that's all stemmed from their defensive effort there. They got a stop and then Wallace was able to get out and run. They average almost 10 points a game in terms of fast break basketball. Wallace taking her total now to 12. Wickham has time to gather her thoughts from outside the three-point line. Sammy Wickham, sublime shot. Time being afforded to her for that three-point attempt. Gaze, and hang in the corner. Gaze again has scored once and has scored another one from a similar spot outside the three-point line, Kate Gaze. She's had some great contributions off the bench tonight. We know that Cole is out. Amy Rochi, a wow, as we see another deep three from Sammy Wickham. Girls are on fire at the moment. No such thing as fatigue, but Amy Rochi is another one that's out tonight. Not only is, the, is Rebecca Cole, but we've got another player, 24 minutes she's averaging per game, seven points um, per game as well. So nice to see Kate Gaze coming in and, and doing what she's good at. Nothing special in terms of trying to do more, but she's a great shooter and she's taking those open shots as we see here and also being able to contribute, but hand down or a little bit too much separation there from Lauren Scherf allows that nice shot as we see someone who we know is also a great shooter in Sammy Whitcomb having a great one tonight as well with 16 points, four of eight from deep. Kate Gaze with eight points, two of them, or six of them rather, coming from, her two, from two shots outside the three-point line. Rochi. Here's Jerry. Gaze presenting again, and she was shut down from the strike. It was a combined effort from Sharp and also Eisenbarger. Mabry. Scherf peels off. Mabry keeps it. Cross court pass. Another long attempt. Whitcomb bounces off this time, and Scherf. Couldn't beat the diminutive Maddie Rochi. Did well to shield it. Bishop oh, just a bit sloppy there from, from all parties, really. Mabry's the beneficiary. Looping over the top. Scherf had it taken away from her last seconds. Fingertip in there from Abby Bishop. Inside the last minute of the third quarter. 
Harmon out the side. Rochi takes it right in front of the Perth coach, Ryan Petrick. Now it's Jarry looking for the long two. Sharp. Good decision here by the Perth Lynx. There's just been a rush of blood from both teams, a couple of unforced errors. Now let's just get a little bit of composure, get a good look as we head into this fourth quarter. Shot clock down to five. Mabry finally kicks it out to Sharp. Rolls off the front lip of the rim. Last possession here. Shot clock turned off. Rochi for the Flyers. They march forward down the lane. One attempt goes up. Whitcomb comes down with it, but Rochi was dragged down to the floor. And so Rochi will get a couple of visits from the line with a couple of seconds remaining. It was actually on the rebound there, I'm pretty sure. So it'll be a sideline ball with one second to go. Not many options. Uh, it's going to have to be, we know that scientifically a 0.9 to get off a shot or it has to be a dunk. So let's see what the go-to play is for Perth. My tip is, oh sorry, to, um, to south side. It's got to be on the rim and I'm pretty sure it's going to go to Harmon with her athleticism. Gary brings it in, Gaze it is in the end with the hooking shot, goes in, oh, bounce. That was a long one second there, Jordan. Wow, oh, that did count. <laughs> Put the ball on the floor and, and step through two players in one second. Kate Gaze must be very, very quick, but uh, Southside Flyers will take that going into the fourth. There you go. Slick work, bit of luck. Perth Lynx still lead, but the Flyers are right in this at three-quarter time here from Danny Nong Stadium. Leading the way, Jackie Young with 17 points. Abby Bishop has 12 for the Southside Flyers. We'll come back on the other side of this for the last quarter here in a close contest. Just two points in it. Quarter number four. Up next. Welcome back to Dandenong Stadium. This round nine clash in the WNBL. The Southside Flyers and the Perth Lynx locked in a close battle with one quarter to go. Jordan Canellis and Jenny Screen with you here watching this encounter. And it's uh, a close run thing, Jenny, that third quarter. Anything different from the first half? Oh, look, I'm thinking, I think I'm, I'm Cheryl Chambers. I'd be happy with that last five minutes of, of the third quarter. First five, I thought they relied too heavily on the three-point line. They're not shooting great from there. They're, well, they're not too bad. They're 6 of 19, 32%. But once they started to get some stops together, get on the defensive glass, get out and push, they looked really, really good and, and hard to stop, to be honest. Um, neither team have really gone to the foul line, so I'd love to see both teams putting the ball to the floor and trying to put the pressure on the on the referees to uh, to get them to the foul line. But either way, we're in with a contest, a two-point ball game between these two teams on a, a balmy Thursday night. You couldn't ask for anything better in the WNBL. So we get underway in this last quarter and the steal right off the rip here from Young, who sprints down the other end, pulls up at the free throw line, misses. Perth leading by two points. It was a tied game at quarter time, 21 points apiece, two-point lead for the Flyers at halftime, and then the four-point swing for the Perth Lynx to lead by two at the break. No extra points yet to start this last quarter. Here's Giabatoni. Garbin around to Young. Steps inside, back out to Garbin. 
Now to Scherf, who pulls it down from the sky and puts it in. And that's what they've got there. That's where they have to go to. They haven't really exploited Scherf down low, especially with this matchup in Harmon in terms of height and size. The, the upper hand is going to go to Scherf here. I'd love to see them, especially while Harmon's on the floor, exploiting that opportunity for the Perth Lynx. Gaze, another three-point shot from Kate Gaze. Can't ask for anything more from a player coming off the bench who normally averages, you know, uh, 12 minutes a game and one point per game and well on her way as she has a tw uh, 13 points, rather, uh, as we get her in this fourth quarter. Kate Gaze with uh, her best match of the season already points-wise. Her previous best was just the five points. She's yeah. had a big effort tonight, 13 points, and she leads the way for the Southside Flyers. 12 points each for Christy Wallace, Abby Bishop, and Sarah Blitzarb's not far behind. Garvin misses the first free throw. Second free throw counts. One point, uh, two point game. Rochi, Jabatoni right in front. Mabry sticks a hand in there, almost gets the steal. Nice scrap. Nice little tussle there between two players that love the ball, love competition. Maddie Rochi, we know she doesn't take a backward step in any situation and you know, she's had a pretty good game tonight. She's had to step up in terms of Cole and, and, and Rochi playing huge minutes in terms of her contributions. Seven points, probably not what she would hope, but, you know, she's also got seven rebounds and four assists to go with it. And the thing that I love the most is she's only got one turnover. She averages almost four and a half per game. And I think her composure tonight has been why part of the reason we only see Southside Flyers down by two as we see Rochi go hard to the bucket there. Bishop kicks it out to O'Hay. He's in space. Blitzarves couldn't pull down the rebounds. Mabry now for Perth. Down the other end. She was apprehended for a moment by Gaze. That's, that's just tough. Yeah. You know, you, you're on the break there. Coming downhill, it's always hard to defend someone who's got the Jets on. Kate Gaze probably could have fouled earlier, given up one of those early fouls. It's not going to hurt you in terms of the, what the scenario of the game at the moment. Um, but Maybury just too strong and, and too smart and, and finding a way to the bucket and a three-point play here. Hasn't been a too disruptive game in terms of fouls. Seven to six. Southside have committed one more. Maybury's had the most on her with three. And two for Sarah Blitzars, but rather tame on that front. Here's Rochi. So Perth a little buffer now in this last quarter. Nothing too huge for that south side couldn't overcome, especially when Kate Gaze is knocking down three-pointers like that. When you're hot, you are hot, and you keep going to that, and, and, and you go to the well until the well runs dry. Kate Gaze is the money hand right now for the south side players, having an exceptional third quarter. Four from four from the three-point land for Kate Gaze. Garvin answers right back. Went off the window. Oh, a slight mishandle from Wallace. Chabatoni pulls up. Mabry, corner shot for three. In and out. And Wallace and Bishop work it out between themselves. Rochi. Abby Bishop. Rochi round the outside. Nice move to get past Chabatoni. Drew the contact as well. That was smart basketball with great maneuverability from Maddie Rochi. And again, it was that composure that we're seeing, and, and I think she's developed that in the last couple of years of her game. Um, as we see Kate Gaze knocking down this beautiful long three mismatch, Scherf closing out to that tough shot too to be able to do that over the hand of six foot four Lauren Scherf, and equally Maddie Rochi with that nice little crossover, avoided the the pick and roll, and and took on. Alex Chibatoni and Lauren Scherf and finds herself at the foul line. Key points coming up here for the Southside Flyers. 
defense. That's where it's at. They're getting some nice, easy looks at the rim. Scoring's not an issue, but they've got to lock up defensively, whether they start to look at some switching action um, and to force turnovers like that. Just get up and in the grill. Make Perth feel a little bit more uncomfortable. Everything's just coming a little bit too easy at the moment. If they can do that, uh, they're well on their way to coming away with potentially an upset win, considering they've got Cole and Rochi on the sidelines. Here's Wallace for the Flyers. Rochi. There was, an, a, there was a, an audacious pass out to Bishop. Meant well, but Bishop was standing among almost three Perth players encircling her. Perth ball. Jabatoni. Mabry putting in a mountain of work tonight, as she always does. Whitcomb. Whitcomb for three. Rolls out past the rim. Rochi wants to drive up the middle. Stops halfway up the lane, and that was her undoing. Garbin gave it off to Mabry around the back. Free player in the corner. Whitcomb for three points. Again, misses a three attempt. Scherf at the O board. Likewise, Chabatoni kicks it out. Mabry steadies. Three points knocked down by Marina Mabry. That girl is money. Money from deep. She hasn't shot that well from the three point line tonight. Only two of seven at 29%. But if you need a bucket and you need one deep from the land of plenty, uh, you want to go to Marina Mabry. Bishop. It's a uh, mid range two that she could have done better with Abby Bishop. Five points still here for Perth. Ooh. Mabry Ooh. again with oh. the same move. Off the glass, no goods. Marks it back in favour of her own team. Garvin for three points. There we go. That is huge. Six wow. points in the space of 30 seconds. And you know who that's off? That is an off Garvin and Wickham. Yes, they knocked down the shots, but that's off Alex Chibatoni. She had two offensive rebounds in both of those plays, which allowed the assist to her teammates. Great job, kiddo. So an eight-point lead here for the Perth Lynx as we take a timeout halfway through this last quarter. And there's, uh, there's been some great contributions from the bench players. I mean, Alex Chepatoni, as you said, Kate Gaze started on the bench as well for the Southside Flyers, but she's leading the way with 16 points. And really, I mean, it's an eight-point game here for Perth. If it wasn't for those three-pointers from Kate Gaze, Southside might have been a lot further back. Yeah, absolutely. Credit to her. She stepped up. And, and, and that's what you'd hope in, in recruiting uh, a player like her when Cheryl Taylor was, was looking at filling the void, was that she is a veteran. She's been around the competition she had some great years up in Townsville and has, has returned back to Victoria a great game from her tonight they've had 19 points off the bench compared to Perth five that's the biggest differential um, and the nice thing about Southside right now um, even though they're down by eight and it was just those second possessions and not coming up with those defensive rebounds they've only got 13 turnovers they normally average 17 a game so huge five minutes from both teams Southside if they can just get a few consecutive stops here and I think we got a ball game. So we recommence halfway through this last quarter. Perth up by eight. Bishop kicks it out. Wallace to the baseline. That's some valuable points from Christy Wallace. Tough, really good. Long close out there by Jackie Young. Exploiting a nice drive baseline. Pull up Jay. Really tough shot that she made look really easy. Young, down low pass to Wickham, back to Young again, at the elbow. Garbin, got it from Sharp. Garbin, the fadeaway two, pulled down by Bishop. And a whistle. Flyers players a bit befuddled by that. That, that's a really tough call in the context of the game. No momentum is with Southside Flyers. They've had a nice look down the other end through Christy Wallace hitting that baseline jumper and now giving up possession. That's a big call from the referees when there was limited contact. Against Jenner O'Hay in the end. Young, Garbin from the wings. It's athletic work from Sarah Blitzar sleeping right up and over. Rochi. 
Bishop, got it from O'Hay. Rochi again. Bishop, three seconds left on the shot clock. That's a quick receive, turn and shoot from Abby Bishop. Nice poise from the Southside Flyers, had some great execution, some nice mismatch screens there. Jenna O'Hay coming off a little bit of a flare screen there and finding her teammate in Abby Bishop for a nice fadeaway too. What a pass from Whitcomb out the sides. Sharp, young, no good in the ends. So here we go. This is the third stop in a row for the Southside Flyers. They've been able to capitalise here, getting some scores. Huge bucket coming up if they can convert. Stringing some consecutive points together here. The Southside Flyers. Rochi hoiks it up. Opportunistic there from Maddie Rochi, probably not the percentage play. Young. Driving to the inside, there was no one there, it was a vacant keyway. And Young perhaps could have done better with it, given all the space she was afforded. Perth still lead by four. Southside can still yet continue this scoring run. Wallace looking for three. Offensive rebound, blitz arms. Wallace comes back in. Bishop, oh hey. Pressing up Garvin. Bishop throws it up. Young gets it back for Perth. Time whittling down now. Both sides will increasingly become more aware of the clock. Whitcomb. Wallace almost had the hand in. Mabry being buffeted away by Blitzars. Mabry flings it up almost in. Did a lap. Rochi pings it down court and Mabry comes in, steals it back. Mabry trying to slide away through and she stops the scoring run of the Southside Flyers. Somehow, some way, Southside Flyers had their opportunities in those four possessions on the offensive end in that last two minutes and just couldn't capitalize. Still a lot of time left in this one. And Glitzars. Draws the foul, doesn't get the M1, but will still get the visit. And that's what they need more of. We know we see an, uh, an unforced turnover there from Maddie Rochi, which we haven't seen much of tonight, and then Mabry just finding her way, needling through two defenders. And then Sarah Blitzarv's nice little crossover back to her right hand, and that's what I want to see more of the Southside Flyers, rather than relying on the three-point line, where they're not shooting great, they're 8 of 24 for the game put pressure on the rim, make the referees have to make the calls by penetrating and getting to the foul line in this last two minutes. Maddie Rochi just the four turnovers, which is a good night for her. Normally is the primary ball handler. You have a lot more possession, obviously, so higher percentage will turn it over, but it's otherwise been a really clean night from Maddie Rochi. Here's Mabry driving low at Rochi. Young. Skipping from side to side, Young. And Blitzarves gives it away. Just a bit overzealous there, Sarah Blitzarves, in defending Jackie Young. Inside the last two minutes. It's an inbound here from Perth. Young gets it back. Mabry. Everyone's static for a second. Mabry's got Bishop in front of her. She goes inside. And I'm going to give credit to Abby Bishop there. I thought she switched out really well onto Mabry. Mabry's very good at lulling you into a false sense of security. Abby just kept her space, used her length and her height against the smaller Mabry and, and was able to get the turnover. Let's see if they can convert here on the offensive end and make a two-point ball game. Crucial possession here now for the Southside Flyers. With less than 90 seconds to go. O'Hay scrambling around. All of her teammates vacated the area, but she did it by herself, Jenna O'Hay. Putting the team on her back. Young. Two points in it with a minute to go. Garvin. Wickham to Young. Pivots forward. Young again, shot clock down to five. Young pulls the trigger and knocks it down. And that's what she's done all game. Young, 19 points now, 9 of 16 for the game. Huge possession here for the Southside Flyers. 
with three possessions left in the game. Jackie Young's best return of the season, 19 points, five better than her last best so far. Oh, it's a cheap turnover from Abby Bishop inside the last minute. Southside Flyers had to score, two possession game. Mabry regathers herself. They can put the Flyers to the sword here, the Perth Lynx. Mabry gets knocked over. Just unfortunate there, Bishop, you know, she had the, the nice shot. She's shot well all night and just gave up that opportunity to take the three and, and put the dagger in the heart of the Perth Lynx and close the gap. And unfortunate with that turnover, one, she'd want to play again. But credit to Perth right now. They're, they're hanging in. They've got the lead. I don't think they've played great, um, but they're just finding a way to get it done. So to extend their lead here, the Perth Lynx, Mabry gets the first free throw. Southside Flyers are going to have to go really hard, get an early two for one here and look at the other end as I think they're calling a timeout. But going to have to get an early quick look within seven seconds and then potentially a stop or a foul, send Perth to the foul line to give themselves any chance to be in, in a, a, a hope of getting this win. So still a two-possession game, six points the difference. With half a minute to go, how tricky is it to try and make this happen? When it's at six points, it's just kind of on that brink, isn't it, of... Oh, it's tough, but never say never. 29 yeah. seconds is a long time. It only takes about three or four seconds to push the ball. They get an early look, an early score, whether it be through a two, um, getting to the foul line or a three. And then if they get a stop, I no doubt they'll have to have full court pressure. Um, either foul, send Perth to the foul line, depending what the foul count is. Um, um, but the, the game's not over. There's plenty of time. There's a lot of talent in both of these teams, especially the Southside Flyers, who know what it's like, as we see another one that knows what it's like to play at the high level in, in Mark Bracky there. You've got, oh, all the greats are in there. You've got Nigel Purchase to the right. You've got Trish Fallon, Alison Tranquilly. Um, oh, Cook was her name back when she played. Both Opals, uh, former Opals, and Mark Bracky himself uh, also played for the Boomers. You know, some great, great history and legends of our game watching the WNBL. Really nice to see. All the stars in attendance. So half a minute to go. And the Southside Flyers manage here. Oh. Uh, Oh, really unfortunate. Love to see that one on the replay. I'm not sure what happened there. B big call by the referees to call that offensive one with yep. less than 25 seconds to go. Can't really see the action, whether it was called on Bishop or Blitzars for the offensive foul as uh, Christy Wallace was making her way through the gate or the double screen action there in an attempt to get that open shot. But, um, you know, it's just the way of the game sometimes. But again, a miss here, and, and they're still still within potential. Mabry, one from two on that visit. So quick work needs to be done here by the Flyers. Rochi out to Blitzars, who airs the shot out over the bucket. And the Perth Lynx, they can while down the clock here. And they can bring it to a close at Dandenong Stadium. Perth 85, Southside Flyers 78. And the Perth Lynx notch up win number five of the season to go five and two through their first seven games of this WNBL campaign. The Southside Flyers to come to their fifth loss. No overtime thriller this time. The Perth Lynx. Getting the job done by seven points, 85 to 78. Full time from Dandenong Stadium. And this Perth team continues to just keep firing on all cylinders. Might not have been.
the uh, the high energy, high octane game, but this one is just get it in the book, get it done, and get your fifth win of the season, Jenny. A win is a win. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, they'll go back to the drawing board. They we know they've got another game coming up in a couple of days, and uh, there's some things they have to clean up, but. They're just getting it done. They, they've got the talent. They've got the caliber, even when they're only scoring five points off the bench. But uh, credit to Southside Flyers. You know, they've they've had some really tumultuous weeks uh, to start 2022, whether it be through COVID, through injuries. They've just had Blitzarv's return. She's only played three games. Um, no Rochi, no Cole tonight. And to take it to Perth Lynx, we're playing some stellar basketball, especially when you got the Australian Opals coach sitting in the crowd. Um, there were some great performances individually tonight from both teams. So this is the best of what we saw tonight with the Perth Lynx getting the job done. 78, uh, 78 to 85, a win by seven points. There were a couple of, a lot of key performers tonight for both sides. But uh, Marina Mabry finished top scorer with 22 points. Jackie Young at her best return of the season with 19. Darcy Garbin and Sammy Whitcomb both had 16. While on a rebound front, uh, Lauren Scherf with 11 rebounds overall. And there was a handful with five for the Perth Lynx, including Jackie Young and Marina Mabry, while Abby Bishop led the match in total with 12 rebounds overall. Player of the match for you tonight, Jenny. Is there a standout tonight? Uh, look, I thought Young was sensational for her 19 points, five rebounds, two assists. I thought she her mid-range game was really good. But shout out also to, you know, the Southside Flyers in, in losing. I thought Kate Gaze had a stellar performance, probably the best that she's had in, in quite a number of years to come off the bench, 16 points, uh, four or four from deep. You couldn't have asked for a better performance, especially when they were down on some of their talent tonight. And a final look at the numbers overall. It was all pretty even. Free throws or more opportunities taken there from the Southside Flyers. Everything's pretty, pretty even all the way down. The turnovers might be the one that hurt them in the yeah, end. Yeah, for me, it wasn't any of the stats that made the difference. It was just the unfortunate errors and the inability to capitalise down the stretch. They had some really good stops, the Southside Flyers. There were some really good moments and passages of play, but then... They won't be able to, but they weren't able to create those stops or those defense into offensive conversions, and that was the difference. Whereas Perth could, um, but there's a lot to take away from the Southside Flyers, and we know that they're going to get better and better as the season go on. You can't have four Opal squad members and be the reigning champions um, and not be hanging around the top four. So the Perth Lynx keep themselves embedded at the top of the table, near the top of the table with the Adelaide Lightning who are also flying so far. Five and two, their win-loss record now after tonight's match. The Southside flies two and five. Next up for Southside will be the Sydney Uni Flames coming up on Sunday the 30th, while for the Perth Lynx on Saturday, they'll be travelling out to uh, Bendigo uh, to take on uh, Bendigo. So that is their next encounter. That's it. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jordan. It's been a pleasure. Uh, nice to see some great basketball here tonight, battling it out, obviously, with Ash Barty playing tennis and, <laughs> and, and the like and the NBL. Um, but that was a great game from um, both sides. Full time from Danny Nong Stadium. The Perth Lynx getting the job done. 85 to 78. Good night. We'll see you again with more WNBL action soon.